This video links to BTEC Applied Psychology and its revision of the learning approach, which is Unit 1. Now, in this video, we are looking at revision. It's focused on the key concepts and the key studies. We are not going to look too much into evaluation and application of the learning approach. We are just going to look at the key concepts and the key studies for this video. The learning approach has three key concepts and I'm going to go through each one with the key study as well. And they are classical conditioning, operant conditioning and social learning. The first key concept I'm going to go through is classical conditioning. And this was first brought about by Pavlov. The key terms for classical conditioning are association, unconditioned stimulus, unconditioned response, neutral stimulus, neutral response, conditioned stimulus and conditioned response. It's important that you remember these key terms and are able to apply them to a scenario so that you can show the examiner that you have applied your knowledge to any situation that they have given you. In the instance of Pavlov, he was trying to get a dog to associate two items together. So before conditioning, we had the unconditioned stimulus of dog food, which gained the unconditioned response of salivation from a dog. Also before conditioning, the neutral stimulus of a bell gained a neutral response from a dog of no salivation. During conditioning, the bell would be rang at the same time as the food being given to the dog. So we have the neutral stimulus of a bell alongside the unconditioned stimulus of food, still gaining the unconditioned response of salivation from the dog. After doing this multiple times, Pavlov found that the bell became a conditioned stimulus and it gained the conditioned response of salivation from the dog without the presence of food. This shows that the bell, which was originally neutral, Becoming the conditioned has been associated with the food. So an association has been made between two objects to gain a desired behaviour. The key study that links to classical conditioning is the study by Watson and Rayner in 1920. The aim of the study was to show that an emotional response such as fear can be learnt through classical conditioning. And the participant of nine month old baby Albert was used. Originally, the rat acted as the neutral stimulus gained no fear from baby Albert, but there was something that did cause fear in him. A loud noise being made behind his head gained a natural reflex of an unconditioned response of fear. During the conditioning, a white rat was presented to little Albert and every time he tried to reach for it, the loud noise was made. So the neutral stimulus alongside the unconditioned stimulus gained the unconditioned response of fear. Again, after multiple times of this happening, the neutral stimulus of the rat became the conditioned. And every time little Albert saw the white rat, he gained the conditioned response of crying. He had made an association between the white rat and the loud noise that was being made behind his head. This was generalized by baby Albert to any other objects that was similar to the white rat. So anything that was fluffy or anything that was white. And the conclusion that was made by Watson and Rayner is that fears or phobias can be easily conditioned, especially in children. Now, this can be useful to psychologists. Whilst it shows us that we can condition a fear, it would suggest that we can decondition it and has helped in the development of treatments such as flooding and systematic desensitisation. But what you do need to remember about little Albert is that it was only one participant. It was in depth and in detail about him, which is gives us good information. However, it's not really generalizable to the wider population. We can't replicate it again with others. It may cause too much distress. So whilst it is a positive study, gives us good information for future research, it is difficult to generalize these findings to any other children that aren't with Albert. The second concept we need to look at is operant conditioning. And operant conditioning has many key terms. The key terms are positive reinforcement, which is similar to giving a reward for a positive behaviour. That increases the likelihood of you performing that behaviour again. We also have negative reinforcement, and this is where an individual performs a behaviour to avoid a consequence. This might be bringing in your homework on time to avoid getting a detention from your teacher. Again, this increases the likelihood of you performing that behaviour again. We also have two types of punishment. We have positive punishment and positive punishment is when you are given something. So you may be given a detention in school for negative behaviour. This decreases the likelihood of you performing that behaviour again. But we also have negative punishment. Negative punishment is when something gets taken away. 
So you might get your phone taken off you if you're using it too much, or you may get your Xbox taken off you if you're playing on it too much and not doing your chores at home. Again, that decreases the likelihood of you performing that behaviour again so that you'll perform in a better behaviour or in a better way. Now, the key study that links to operant conditioning is by Skinner in 1932. The aim of this was to measure the rate at which rats would press a lever when a food pellet was delivered after each lever press. And four rats were individually tested in Skinner's box. Before the experiment fully started, pellets would be released random intervals so that the rat knew where the pellets would come from and knew what their reward would be. After the experiment fully started, the rat could only get a pellet if it pressed the lever, so the pellet was acting as a reward for the desired behaviour, which was pressing the lever. Now, the four rats that were used, two of the rats, it only took one press of the lever, followed by a dispense of the pellet, for them to immediately start pressing the lever at a very high rate, so they continuously press the lever to get more food as a reward. Another of the rats had to press the lever once, and then it took it over an hour to press it again, and only after this pressing it again did they start to press the lever at a high rate. The final rat had to press the lever five times before they started to press it at a high rate. But what this does show us is that by food acting as the reward for the rats, you can condition quite easily a behaviour or a desired behaviour, such as pressing a lever. So it shows that operant conditioning does work during experiments as well. Now, again, this is quite useful for us. It shows that it is it works. It may help us in schools giving children stickers for desired behaviours or in prisons giving prisoners a token economy so that they know their desired behaviours to be able to earn rewards. But again, this is done on rats. It isn't done on humans. So we need to be careful when generalising this study. The third key concept that we need to know is social learning theory. And the key terms for social learning are observation, imitation, modelling, role model, identification and vicarious reinforcement. Now, observation is just watching another individual perform a behaviour. Imitation is copying that behaviour. Modelling is when an individual is showing another how exactly to perform a certain behaviour. And a role model is someone that we may look up to or want to be like. Identification is very similar. Identification is when you see similarities between you and an individual performing a certain behaviour. This is more likely if they are the same gender or if they are a family member, such as a sibling or a parent. Vicarious reinforcement is a type of indirect reinforcement, whereas operant conditioning is direct. With vicarious reinforcement, this is when an individual sees another person be reinforced. For example, if you're in school, you see your friend be given a detention for shouting out in class, you are less likely to then shout out yourself. However, if you see another individual in your class be rewarded with a sticker or a prize for putting their hand up and having good manners, you are more likely to then have uh, good manners and put your hand up to participate in class as you also want the reward. So vicarious reinforcement, seeing another individual be reinforced, whether that be positively or whether it be punished, and you being more likely if you see them be rewarded or less likely to perform that behaviour if you see them be punished. Now, the key study for this is by Bandura. And Bandura in 1961 had the aim to see if children were more likely to behave aggressively after observing an aggressive model. There were 72 male and female American nursery age children used for this experiment, all split equally across three groups. The three groups that we had was the aggressive model condition, the not aggressive model condition and the control group. And there were three separate rooms that we used. The first room was different for each participant or each group. The first group in the first room saw an adult be aggressive towards a bobo doll. They might have hit it, shouted at it or kicked it. For the not aggressive group, the adult was still in the room with them, but they played nicely with other toys. They did not go towards the bobo doll. And in the control group, there was no adult in that first room with them. After this point, all three groups of children had the same experiences in room two and three. I remember each child was individually tested. So in room two, every child went through the aggression arousal stage. 
Now, the aggression arousal stage, these children were placed into a room with very nice toys that were very posh. After a few minutes after they started playing, an adult came in and said that these toys are reserved for the very best children. and You're not one of the very best children, so you need to come into this other room. You can't play. This was to try and wind the children up so that they are ready to be a little bit more aggressive in the third room. In the third room, the children were left to play with any toy they wanted without adult supervision. This included a Bobo doll as well as many other toys. The children were observed and had their behaviours tallied in behavioural categories to see whether they would be more aggressive or not. The result of this was that group one, who had an aggressive adult model, were the most aggressive out of the three groups. But overall, boys were more aggressive than girls and boys were more likely to imitate a male model than a female model. Now, what this shows us, especially that boys are more likely to imitate a male model, is that identification is important when replicating behaviours. So having a role model that is the same gender is quite important. But it does show us that any child overall, after seeing aggressive behaviour, is more likely to replicate it. And this is useful for psychologists with the 9pm watershed being brought in where certain acts of aggression are not allowed to be shown at a time when children could be watching, especially young children, to try and protect them from seeing such violent acts and then possibly replicating it themselves. But again, we have to be careful with using this study. We can say it's quite unethical because in room two, these children were told that they were not the very best children. This could potentially cause psychological harm. But it, the conclusions could also be said to be reductionist. It's not taking full consideration for anything that may be biological, like a different sized amygdala in males and females. However, the conclusion or the finding that boys are more aggressive than girls does suggest some biological factor, possibly such as testosterone. Now that's all of our key studies and key concepts of the learning theory. Don't forget to practice your evaluation. This is just the AO1, the description. Remember to practice with exam questions as well, especially scenario questions, linking your AO2 skills, so your knowledge of the key concepts and the key studies, and applying it to any scenario. And don't forget, you also need to know links to gender aggression and consumer behaviour. Make sure you use your class notes, as well as this video, as this was quick revision. It wasn't every single bit of information that you may need. But remember, you may need to look through your notes for full revision.